Hi, Mike Kennedy today, and we're doing a review. We're doing a review on this thing. What is this thing, even? Well, this thing is the uh, Fusil Wi-Fi interface that supports all OBD2 protocols. Now, what in the world does that mean, and what is it? Well, what this does is it plugs into your car. You connect it to your... This is just the case <laughs> to film it. Uh, you, you can connect it to your smart device and uh, not only can it gives you all the error codes which you can easily look up. Uh, now first I'm going to say I'm a little confused about the software. I've got the there's a free software that does all the stuff that you need to have it do, do that you can download. It's called Car Doctor. Great. Uh, but uh, uh, it appears that with the Android version, this is, I've got the iPad mini with the Android version, you can go up a version that does all these other things. But I notice on the, uh, uh, in the uh, Apple market, you know, the, the app store they have, uh, there's a bunch of, of programs that do stuff with uh, an interface. And uh, I guess I've got to look through those programs and see which ones actually will connect to this by Wi-Fi. But this is an actual Wi-Fi device. So you plug it in, it starts broadcasting Wi-Fi, and my device, I switch it over from the Wi-Fi right now. It's I'm near my house, so it's connected to my strong open signal, and it's that's where it's connected. Well, when I plug this in, I tell it, no, don't connect to that. This, this comes up clearly uh, on my when I go to settings and internet, uh, this comes right up and it's got the name on it. The, the, and uh, I just click on it and it connects. Now, once you connect to it, then you turn the app on and there's a button that says connection. And you hit that button, it sends some information to initialize this, then it initializes it. Okay, so one of the first things we can do, which is we're in our smart car. Uh, which forgets what it is, forgets what it is. We recently had the Flashware Soft in it, oh, the fa Flashware Soft, no, the software flashed in it and got new software for it. And for a while the car was like, oh, it seems like there's no problem. Well, car already now again has electrical problems. I think they're just electrical problems. This car, this is the I think it's a 78 Passion 24. This is rated one of the 15 worst cars that were like it made that year. And it's just got all kinds of bugs and electrical problems. Uh, we got into a pattern with this car where you go out and turn it on. The key wouldn't it even seemed to work. And the car just was like it was, you know, it was like trying to turn on a computer without a battery. And uh, we got through this process of trying you know, turning everything on and off in the car that we could and waiting, praying sometimes, and then waiting 20 minutes or half an hour and then come back out to the car and start it. But that was very inconvenient when uh, you're out somewhere and you get stuck for half an hour. So to eventually these program, these problems continue to manifest till we did this thing with, uh, I was in a repair shop and they couldn't even move it. I mean, they could tow it obviously, but what I'm saying is they couldn't even drive it from the parking lot into the garage. So we had this software flash. So now uh, we had the flash or soft because the place that was checking it, which I'm gonna give a big shout out to my Nicky Muffler because at least my Nicky Muffler, in my humble opinion, this is the only opinion, appears to know more about the smart cars than the Mercedes-Benz dealership near me. Uh, the owner, the, well, I shouldn't say owner, but the manager of this particular uh, Meineke muffler has a Mercedes-Benz. So I think she's personally vested in it. But anyway, what we're going to do is plug this in, and I'm going to take some screenshots to show you the, the error codes that it can show. And uh, we're just going to do a thing where we, uh, uh, it can do all of these parameters. It can show you all of these things like fuel efficiency, whatever. But I thought I'd go and I'd show you a screen of the engine uh, uh, before and after I turn on the air conditioner. You'll, you'll see the the how drastically 
uh, that increases demand on the engine, okay? And then I have to throw in this disclaimer. I've, I've read studies that say that uh, opening all your windows in your cars makes it so unaerodynamic that you use as much gas as if you just had the air conditioner on. So just keep that in mind. If you think you're saving money on a really hot day by opening your windows, you're probably not. Not if you're traveling at a, a decent speed. You're, you're probably uh, do Now, if I had my wits about me, and maybe I'll do this someday, I could use this to actually test this. This has fuel efficiency ratings and everything in real time. I could actually take it, the car out, and uh, get it, you know, get the car all warmed up, get it up to speed, and I could be on, say, on the highway so that I know I can drive the same, exact same speed for a certain length of time, and I could do the experiment. I could watch the fuel efficiency, you know, put on the cruise, this doesn't have cruise control. Well, anyway, I can do it with another car, or just try to be careful. But I was thinking you put on cruise control, and you, uh, uh, then you do the two items. And watch the fuel efficiency and see how it's different. See if opening the windows does decrease the drag enough so that you see the engine compensating. And then try it with the air conditioner and see which one is which. Personally, on a hot day, I go for the air conditioner. So anyway, let's plug this in. You plug it in, there's a bunch of LEDs, and it's funny, the smart car, for some reason, because it's a smart car, everything's got to be different. When you plug it in, you can plug it in only upside down, so you can't see the lights. Like when I plug it into my Chevy Malibu, I can see the lights, and this gives me a confirmation that it's plugged in, it's, tr it's trying to connect, and it connects. But with the smart car, it's upside down, and I can't even see it. <laughs> Which, frankly, smart cars are upside down anyway. I don't know about the new ones. I have one Facebook friend that he loves his smart car. He has a newer one. But it's funny that this smart car takes premium gas, okay, and gets 45 miles plus per gallon. When you look at the ratings on the new smart cars, they're way down to like 35. And it's kind of like, gee, you can buy a mid-sized car for that. That gets 35 miles a gallon now. Not saving anything. You're, you know, with the smart car, the smart car to me, the advantages to it is maneuverability. The car is really small, which probably is really bad in an accident, but it's really maneuverable. If you drive by a parking spot, you can almost still get in it. It's like you can all, the turning radius of this car is ridiculous. Uh, backing it up is so easy. It's, it's just completely different animal than a normal car. And when I'm saying a normal car, I guess I'm comparing that to a Chevy Malibu and I'm not trying to compare it to a big, you know, a big car. I'm talking about a regular mid-sized car. So uh, let's do it. Let's put it in. Let's get some error codes and we'll see what, uh, what we can show you. And uh, like I say, this car particularly right now has some clutch error error codes that could just be the sensors in the clutch. Now that's always a problem with whenever you have an error code, it's never quite clear, I think, whether it's the problem with the sensor or it's the problem with the actual device. Sometimes they can, it can distinguish by the error codes. It will say your one of your O2 sensors isn't working. Okay? And it will t it will tell you the sensor is bad. Other times it's kind of like like one of the error codes with this is iffy like is it the clutch or is it the actuator switch? Well, you can't you can't really tell until you go in there and actually like do the repair, I guess, or or ex look at it further or, or have extensive knowledge about the car, which I have no extensive knowledge about cars. I've just learned what I've learned from things breaking down. Okay, now we'll go to the screenshots where we'll show uh, the device in action, showing different error codes and different things like that.
So there you go. There's some screenshots. We saw the uh, uh, the domain screen. I hit connect. It sends some information. Then you saw the connect screen. You saw the error codes, the clutch error codes. Uh, there's a graph that shows when the air conditioning was on and off, the RPMs of when the engine was on and off. The only odd thing I found about this, and I, I must admit, this is, could be the way that I've set up the iPad is, okay, my car and the house are close together, of course, in the driveway. Well, if this remains plugged in and I go into my house, my my device, the way I've got my iPad mini, doesn't automatically switch over to the house Wi-Fi, okay? So I have to go and uh, go into the settings and tell it, no, connect to, and you'll see my little thing there. Uh, uh, you'll see the MK home thing or something, and I have to tell it to reconnect to that. Of course, if I just pull this out, it automatically, even in my driveway, will reconnect to the house again. But uh, this will stay connected if I go in anywhere in my house. This stays connected uh, to the uh, iPad mini. This is a strong enough signal from this to do that. 